Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through evolutionary process model. As we have discussed multiple process models till now guys. So the basic concept, I'll be giving you the outline and I'll be giving you two to three points only for each module. So basically, if you want the notes for each and every module, you can refer the previous videos or directly the PDF. You can find the notes in from SDLC, you will read all the concepts guys. You'll be, you'll be getting a clear idea about each and every component, like what is requirement gathering like that. Everything is written there, so you'll be getting a clear idea, okay? Okay, so in this lecture, let us go through evolutionary process model. So in evolutionary, we are having three different process models, guys. In this lecture, we will be going through prototype model, okay? So here we take multiple times input from the client or customer until the adequate system is a requirement, client requirements are gathered, okay? So in our previous lectures, I did inform you, right? Basically, the most important step is nothing but requirement gathering, guys. The way how you gather or how well you gather, that much easily you can develop the whole project, guys. Because everything is dependent on requirements. Okay. So basically, in evolutionary process model, you continue until you collect all the requirements and then you start your project. Okay. So while we are going through the examples, we'll be having a clear idea. Don't worry. Okay. So let us go through the first method that is nothing but prototyping model. So prototyping model is nothing but from the name we can say. So here you are designing or you are developing some prototype. So what is prototype guys? It is just something like a dummy or dummy module or dummy code or dummy item. Okay. Using which you can show your customer that okay your end product will be in this way. So assume that uh, assume any kind of product guys. So you will be assuming that this is your product you will be giving to your customer and he will be saying that okay it will be in this way. No, 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 no. I want in, uh, in the other way. I need another color like that he can say and you will be changing according to it before developing the original product only. So that is the main thing here. The prototype is made before you even start the original product development. Okay. Okay. So the flow will be in this way guys. Initially you will be gathering the requirements. Okay. So once you gather the requirements, you will be creating a quick design. So just like for a prototype and based on that design, you will be building your prototype. Okay. Once the prototype is ready, you will go in your, your customer and say that, Hello client, this is this is the project which we are made. This is the prototype of the project. You'll be informing him. So he'll be giving you some suggestions. If there are any suggestions, you'll modify the requirements. And again, you do the quick design. And this process continues until you get a particular requirements, until the requirements reach the client's expectations. Clear? Yes. Okay. So after that, you will be following the same process that is nothing but so if here it is nothing but accepted by the customer. So here the customer accepted that okay, the prototype is fine. I'm ready with I'm ready to work with you. He, he informed you that. Okay, so then you will be moving on to design, implement, test, and maintain. Guys, if you recall, we discussed about requirement gathering, designing, implementing, testing, maintenance from our past three to four lectures already. Right? So I'll be just giving you one or two statements. That's it. You can write on your own or you can check the previous lecture or previous notes to get the answers for that. Okay. Okay. So most of the customers are not sure about the functionalities they require for the software. As a result, the final software is not according to the expected demand. So basically why most of the products will not be according to the client requirement guys, because of the requirement gathering, because requirement gathering is not happened properly. In that cases only we will be ending up with a wrong product at the end. So basically that is the reason why we will be doing multiple iterations in this requirement gathering until the customer accepts the item. Okay. So once requirement gathering is done, a basic design prototype is done showing, we'll be showing it to the client for validation. Okay. So if clients inform, so no, this is what, this is what not my, this is not, this was not my requirement and we will collect the requirements again to do the basic design and prototype and ask him for validate, validation until he accepts it. Once customer accepts it, we will be moving on to the same steps that are nothing but design, implement, test and maintain. Guys, you can just find the notes in waterfall model or SDLC for this theoretical components. Okay, so now let us go through some advantages. I just want to make the videos a bit short and sweet. So that is the reason why I'm just skipping the theory because we discussed already. If I repeat again, it will be a repetition here also. Okay, so the main advantage of this prototype model is customer get a chance to see the product earlier. So basically when someone will be seeing the product guys, when it is a final product, right? So this is a marker at the end, you will be getting the marker. We will not be creating any prototype previously, but now I am we are making some pre -pro prototypes like that. Okay. Similarly, there is a scope of accommodation of new requirements. 
so assume that you designed marker in a different way and now the client so told that you he wants some other way of marker or some other shape or back end shape some other cap design or anything okay so in that situations those kind of requirements can be gathered guys i am saying in terms of product you can assume it in terms of software also guys okay okay so developers will be more confident as prototype was accepted hence there is the risk is reduced so once a prototype is accepted you can assume that okay now the project will be running smoothly without any technical issues we can assume in that way okay okay but there are few disadvantages so after seeing the earlier prototype user demands the actual system as per his or her requirement so basically with the help of uh, prototype it will be an advantage for us but sometimes it will be a misleading or misconfection confusion for the client yes yes if not managed properly the iterative process can run for a long time so assume that you hired someone someone who has no experience in collecting the requirements so you hired him for this process so basically he'll be taking the requirements from the customer he'll be designing it building a prototype and he'll be asking the customer is this the product you want he'll be saying no i asked for a marker and you are giving me a pen what is this he'll be confused like that so if the client or sorry if the manager of the design manager or the requirement gather collector is not a proper high developer he will be there will be a huge issue that we will be running for a long time in the same loop okay if client is not interested he may lose his or her interest in the project so basically this process continues for a long time guys like basically we want the requirements right so we continue the process for a long time sorry so we will be continuing the process for a long time hence there is a high chance that in between sometime the customer might think okay my project might be useless my my, my project might be like this like that you'll be thinking like that so that could be also an issue in this prototype model okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea on this prototype model so in the next lecture we will be going through spiral model okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching